Damnation is a third person shooter that before it released sounded like an absolute winner, mixing elements of platforming, exploration and shooting, all wrapped in a steampunk themed world on the brink of civil war. The concept was extremely appealing, but then it actually released. The story revolves around a man known as Hamilton, a member of a rebel gang trying to stop the rise of an evil industrialist named Prescott. However, for Hamilton, stopping Prescott is only half of the battle, as he's also trying to track down his missing fiance, which winds up having something to do with Prescott as well. Basically, the narrative is just a convoluted mess and extremely cliche. The spoken dialogue doesn't do it any favours either. Of course, just because the story is bad, the gameplay can always make up for it. Well, with that Damnation, you're shit out of luck, as it's just as broken and nonsensical as the plot. For a game that sees you spending most of your time shooting, you would have thought that this area would be pretty solid. But no matter which weapon you're using, except for the sniper rifle or anything that explodes, it will take a ridiculous amount of rounds to take even the weakest of enemies out. Even at close range, the bullets you fire seem to spread outward to create an outline around your target, instead of hitting what is damn right in front of you. In situations like this, the brain dead AI actually comes in handy, as you can safely pop off each enemy from a distance with your sniper rifle without any of them moving a muscle. In the end, Damnation really is a sad story. The game had an interesting concept and a good amount of potential, but it just never came together. It really was unfortunate to see it fail in just about every aspect, because even if it had gotten one thing right, perhaps it could have still found an audience happy to check it out. However, as it is, I can't imagine anyone enjoying the time with it. I cannot even begin to explain how fast X-Blades becomes boring. The narrative sees you taking up the role of a Yumi, a relic hunter who's on the search for an artifact that is said to hold the fate of the world in its grasp. What first starts out quite intriguing, soon descends into complete bollocks, and by the time the credits roll, you'll wonder why you wasted your time. X-Blades is the very definition of frustration and annoyance. The combat is complete fucking chaos. Legitimate play mechanics are thrown out the window in favour of wildly mashing the X button and doing AoE magic attacks every 5 seconds. Ayumi's blades and guns are not only extremely weak, there is no sense of them ever really connecting with anything. The only way you know that your attacks are connecting with an enemy is that they are not swinging at you. Seriously, how many times can you hit a monster with your blades and not have them die? Apparently, a lot. The way Ayumi unleashes her combos contributes to this feeling of disconnection. She just kind of throws her blades out there in a haphazard way. That doesn't seem to have much to do with how the player is pressing X. You quickly realise that the best course of action is to forsake the targeting system, mash the X button and unleash a surround spell every few seconds to get the groveling hordes around you off your ass. Speaking of the targeting system, I want to know who the knob was that decided to have it randomly fix on an enemy 100 meters away, or even monsters that haven't even popped their heads up from the ground. It feels like it was implemented just to give the player a hard time, instead of making the combat feel more streamlined and manageable. In the hands of a more talented developer, we could have had a real winner on our hands. But at most, X-Blades is a fart in the wind. Ayumi's exposed butt cheeks are a constant reminder of that. Do yourself a favour and pick up God of War instead. Sometimes you just randomly pick up a game. Something about the title draws you in, the box art looks appealing, whatever. I honestly can't say what I was expecting with Magus. A so-so action RPG is probably the closest that I thought the game was going to be. What I was not expecting was a third person shooter. There are some minor RPG elements in Magus. Stats to sink points into, different types of magic to progress, but really that's a minor aspect. The three types of magic are green, for major offensive magic, health and a couple of defensive spells, blue, which is comprised of energy attacks, the ability to float and some other spells that affect the space around enemies. Lastly there's red, which are based on necromancy and let you summon the corpses of the enemies you've killed. And really that's kind of it. The problem is that half of the time these spells don't even fucking work. Most attempts result in the enemies doing nothing in relation to the spell you've used, no damage. Nothing, just a drain on the mana pool. 
because of this you'll find yourself settling into a few that actually do something, which might have been a bigger issue had the combat actually been challenging. Enemies will occasionally stab at you if you stand there and wait for the fort to occur to them. There is no challenge to speak of, even with the difficulty slider cranked to the max. When the game isn't having you kill piles upon piles of similar enemies, it decides to do conversation. Ugh, the conversations almost always whittle down to let's kill these guys, or let's kill these guys super painfully. It really doesn't make any effort to show the main character in any sympathetic or likeable light. Put simply, Magus is shit. There are no redeeming factors that help it stand out. The novelty of it being a fantasy game that's a shooter will wear out really quick, and what you're left with is a complete wreck of a game that isn't even worth the disc it's printed on. Right from the beginning, the writing was on the wall when it comes to Rogue Warrior. After initially being scrapped by the original developers and then being picked up by Rebellion a few years later, it's a game that seems to have never been able to reach the lofty expectations that it set itself. Based loosely on the exploits of former Navy SEAL Richard Dick McKinko, Rogue Warrior tells the completely fictitious story of the hero himself as he attempts to neutralize North Korean missile launch capability. And that is literally the extent of the plot. There are sections in between missions with Dick's riveting commentary on the current situation, making an attempt to disguise itself as an intelligent and cohesive plot, but it ultimately falls flat, with no amount of one-liners or attempts at comedy being able to save the dire state of the narrative. You know it's probably not a great start whilst playing Rogue Warrior that within the first 5 minutes or so of gameplay, you come to the conclusion that this is probably the least amount of fun you've ever had. What was originally pitched as a broad, open-ended tactical shooter was instead a linear and painstakingly generic shooter with all the charm of a wet mop. Levels usually consist of moving from objective marker to objective marker, shooting up bad guys along the way, and doing really not much else. There are no puzzles, no bosses, or even any collectibles or minor distractions along the way. It's just straight up dull. For a game that came out around the midpoint of the PlayStation 3's life cycle, visually Rogue Warrior rivals the greatest of Wii titles. The Cold War environments are extremely generic and dull, as are the basic textures that illustrate them. The animations are robotic and as stiff as they come, and the weapons and explosive effects are a major embarrassment to the console's power and potential. Overall, Rogue Warrior is just embarrassing. It's the perfect example of a developer reaching higher than they can reach, with the result being one of the worst games to ever see the light of day on the PlayStation 3. Much like its name suggests, Girl Fight is a fighter that is made up of an entirely female cast, and I have nothing against the concept. A perfect example would be Skullgirls, which was an incredible fighting game based around the idea of a roster completely comprised of women. But the difference between that game and this one is night and day. When in combat, it comes across as a sort of dead or alive clone, with many of the inputs and abilities being mapped to the same buttons. But unlike its clear inspiration, it has nowhere near the same amount of combos or special moves to make it feel satisfying. There's not much difference between each of the characters, with most of them sharing the same abilities and techniques, which really takes the fun out of trying them all out. I will give the game some credit though. The psionic abilities are certainly interesting, and can be activated once you've built up enough meter by performing hits. They all have a variety of uses, such as Steel Body that allows the fighter to take more damage, or Life Leech, an ability that will take a bit of the opponent's health and add it to yours with every hit. While there isn't a huge selection to choose from, these psionic powers do give Girl Fight a piece of personality, a sense that the developers aren't just mindless zombies that can't come up with their own ideas. Sadly, while it's a good mechanic, it's still trapped in a shockingly terrible PlayStation 3 game. Now for everything that it gets wrong, Girl Fight is actually quite a good looking game, with all of the characters and backgrounds possessing a nice amount of creativity and a solid frame rate to bring it all together. But that's about the only good thing to be said about the game. If you're a fan of the genre and are looking for something new on the PlayStation 3, this is definitely one to avoid if you're not willing to put up with some of its shortcomings. They always say the biggest form of flattery is imitation, 
and it's clear to see where Smash and Survive got its inspiration, mainly the Burnout series and Destruction Derby. But instead of providing a cohesive and enjoyable experience, it's a complete mess that will just steal your time. It's essentially a car combat game that sees you taken on the part of a rookie who's looking to join a gang known as the Necromancers. Right at the beginning, your vehicle will have absolutely no weapons attached, but by progressing through the campaign, you soon come into a range of weaponry and new cars, with sword blades, flamethrowers, pulse emitters and other weapons. Naturally, each car has their own attributes, mainly in strength, handling and acceleration, which makes them suitable for specific missions you'll be asked to complete. There's a few types as well, from deathmatch to base defense and bombing runs which help mix it up. Now, you're probably wondering, this all sounds positive, so what gives? Well, the main aspect that lets Smash and Survive down is actually playing the game. The handling of each car is straight up fucked. No matter what your handling stat may be for any specific vehicle, it's incredibly difficult to just simply drive around. Often, the problematic driving seems linked to the broken physics engine, as on more than one occasion, I found myself pressing right on the joystick and going straight or left. Cars also have a terrible tendency to get caught on the terrain, and inexplicably flip at even the slightest touch. Considering that the entire point of the game is to kill opponents using weapons, the difficulty in driving the vehicles within the game only makes aiming them and targeting vulnerable areas of an opponent's car that much more annoying. This is truly the definition of a terrible game. I don't know what it is, maybe it was produced on an extremely tight budget, but that still doesn't excuse the fact that it fails on nearly every level. Now when it comes to video games based on movies, it is always a bit of a mixed bag. Sure, there are some diamonds in the rough, but more often than not, they completely suck balls, and they're just created to capitalize upon a popular name. Rambo the video game falls into that category and recreates many of the iconic moments from the films, but fails to impress when it comes to gameplay. First off, it's entirely on rails, which severely limits the amount of freedom the player has. Sure, there's plenty of on-rail shooters which are actually quite good, but what lets Rambo down is the severe lack of variety that makes playing through it a complete and utter chore. Your goal is simple, you move the reticle across the screen until you line it up with an enemy and fire. Sounds easy, right? Well, this is where the wonky as fuck auto-aim feature comes into play. That should have been called auto-miss instead, as it violently throws you off target time and time again. Couple this with the fact that hit detection is nigh on non-existent, with many of the shots just clearly going straight through the enemy with no effect. It quickly becomes a huge problem as you try to advance through the game. Thankfully, this isn't the only aspect that makes up the experience. Sprinkled throughout the main campaign are several quick time events that at least offer a change of pace and save you from the tedious main attraction that are meant to be the shooting sections. It's just bad design. But there's got to be a saving grace, right? What about the huge amount of fans of the films? They'll surely enjoy it. Well, aside from the shockingly ugly character models, what is actually quite cool is that all of the characters that appear are voiced by the original voice actors. They claim they received the original voice work from the studio, but to be fair, it just sounds like a straight up recording of a VHS. So no, there's no silver lining, no saving grace, just pure and utter bollocks. The PlayStation 3 was home to an incredible amount of RPGs, but as with most consoles, a few stinkers managed to crawl their way out of the gate, with Last Rebellion being one of them. To get this over with, yes, Last Rebellion is crap. However, it will appeal to a very select and small crowd of RPG fans. You know, like something that is good in a crappy way, and Last Rebellion is exactly that. While it wasn't even close to being good on any level, I came to appreciate some aspects of it. But the major thing that brings it down is that it feels like a high school project. Everything about the game's presentation looks cheap, half-assed and amateur. Hitmaker's production values have never been very high, but if that's saying anything, even Dragoneer's area and Blade Dancer look better and they were on the PSP. Last Rebellion is almost unacceptable as a PlayStation 3 game. Needless to say, the cutscenes are pretty boring to watch. Only the voice acting gives some life to the pathetic character interactions, but it's not the best around. 
ranging from acceptable to cringe inducing that really takes away from the narrative that the game is trying to tell. It's the kind of crappy RPG some people will like. Mind you, there's a fanbase for bad games, and Last Rebellion exactly fits that bill. It's far from being good, but it's playable, and the bad stuff is actually what makes it charming. The game feels so low budget, like something that is not totally fully fledged, but something that could have been good. I did like some aspects of it. The battle system was interesting to say the least, and it had this kind of dark, gloomy feeling that some people will like as well. But the whole thing felt rushed and incomplete. The areas are dull and empty, there's just nothing to do. The game is overly easy, and the experience as a whole just doesn't feel compelling or rewarding. If you're looking for a new RPG to get stuck into, this isn't it. As any longtime viewer of the channel will know, I'm a huge fan of horror. From Silent Hill to Haunting Grounds and Resident Evil, it's a genre that I've always had a connection with. But for every good game, there's always one that disappoints, and Amy unfortunately falls into the latter. It's essentially a third-person survival horror that sees you cast as Lana, a lady with psychic abilities. I'll be honest, the first chapter of Amy does offer a glimmer of hope that your money has been spent on something worthwhile. It opens on a train, and after a huge explosion forces you to get off at the next station, you find it infested with zombies that do manage to provide a real sense of terror. Now combat in Amy suffers from the same thing the Saw video game suffered from, which is the fact that whoever hits first will win the fight. If you get hit, you're most likely stuck in a loop until death. Right off the bat, you'll know to now be avoiding enemies and hoping that somehow the gameplay gets better. If Amy had a saving grace, it would definitely be the puzzles or cooperative aspects between Lana and Amy herself. Even though the puzzles contain no logic, they are fun. You'll have Amy entering rooms via crawl spaces, hitting switches, grabbing keycards, operating elevators and much more. Unfortunately, things go downhill and Amy's real issues unfold right before your eyes as you progress. Amy contains a ridiculous amount of trial and error. Most of the time I was playing, I was wandering around aimlessly without a clue as to what I should be doing. I understand that it's a survival horror and wouldn't even have minded, but unfortunately Amy is plagued with extremely cheap deaths. A section that should take maybe 5 minutes with a competent checkpoint system will take you a fucking hour. Finally, there's a camera that constantly messes you up by going completely AWOL. Summing Amy up as a mess just doesn't do it justice. I would rather repeatedly castrate myself with a fork than play this game. And truthfully, that would be far more entertaining. Ride to Hell Retribution is an absolute travesty of a game. And you know me guys, I'll always give a game a fair shake, and even report some positives if I think they need to be noted, but this one is a completely different story. The game pretty much declares how bad it's going to be from the very start, by literally throwing you into a turret section as the first screen, after mindlessly shooting random enemies without a clue as to what's going on. The game instantly throws you into another generic section of action games, a quick time event brawl. After that you're given a quick scene of the main character, Jake, shooting some poor dude on the ground. It's like the game is just running through a checklist of mediocre game design. Turret section? Check. QTE fight? Check. A scene that tries extra hard to look cool as the main character shoots a guy? Check. From there, you are transported to one of the main gameplay mechanics of the experience, which is on your motorcycle. From here, the game goes from mediocre to absolute terrible, as you discover how horribly the controls or lack thereof handle. The motorcycle segments, which ought to be a highlight of the game, are just padded sections of boredom with unruly physics. All that happens in these areas is you drive down long winding roads with an occasional button prompt to power slide or fight off fellow bikers that magically materialize out of nowhere. Half the time you won't even have to, as the enemies like to suddenly take off at light speed and ram into walls before exploding. It's almost as if the AI of the game doesn't even want to play. The bike sections are not the only parts of the game that play poorly however. Pretty much every aspect of the game is broken, both melee combat and gunfights, which made me learn right away how repetitive and frustrating the game can be. The entire design is nonsensical, the story and world are lifeless, and the way women are portrayed in the game takes it from being horrible to downright disgusting. 
this is one for the bin. Well that does it for today's video. Keep an eye out for part 2 as that will be coming up soon so don't forget to hit subscribe and tickle that bell. You can follow me on all of the socials to stay up to date on future videos as well as join our growing community on Discord and meet many of the like minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd like to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters Rhino, Skill Jim, Nano, Steve, Richard, Amy, Daniel, NSG Reviews and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining our Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon to gain access to exclusive videos and giveaways for as little as $1 per month, you'll find the links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, I'll catch you next time.